In this video, we're going to be looking at topic 4H, synthetic polymers. And this is part of the triple content for organic chemistry in the IGCSE course from Edexcel. So our learning outcomes are to look at condensation polymerization and how they form a polyester. Be able to write the structural and displayed formula of a polyester when we're given the monomers and vice versa and to know a little bit about some particular polyesters known as biopolyesters. So just a bit of a recap from what you learned in double. Addition polymerization is when we have lots of ethene monomers which contain our double bonds and they join together to form a polymer and we get no other products being formed. So we can see here that we've got n number of our ethene monomers joining together to make a polymer with n repeat units and that's addition polymerization. We're now going to look at a different type of polymerization which is called condensation polymerization and this is where we have alcohols and carboxylic acids bonding together this time to form ester bonds. So we've covered esters back in the last topic in topic 4G and we are going to be looking at how we can then take that same equation that we saw in that same reaction and apply it to form a polymer. So we're going to be combining these to give us the COO functional group. Now what we can do is we can have lots of these functional groups all joining together to form a polyester. But the question is how do we do this? So we use two different monomers and we're going to join them together in an alternate pattern. And every time we make an ester bond, we're going to get a small molecule of water being removed, which is why we call this condensation polymerization. So as opposed to addition polymerization, where we only make one product, this time we're going to be removing water each time. So this has got a slightly lower percentage yield, but it still gives us the polymer that we want. So what we have to do is to take the monomers that we've already met, our alcohols and our carboxylic acids, and we have to change them slightly. Because if we kept them the way that they are, they can only form one ester bond. What we have to do now is we have to introduce something called a diol or a dicarboxylic acid, sometimes known simply as a diacid. And when we have this term di, we use this to mean two. And you've met this before, if you think back to diatomic molecules, they are molecules with two atoms. So diols contain two OH functional groups and dicarboxylic acids contain two COOH groups. Now, your alcohol can lose a hydrogen on both sides and your ethanoic acid, so your ethane dioic acid, can lose the OH on both sides and these can now join together in this long chain. So what this actually looks like is we're going to have our ethane 1,2 diol which we just saw look like that with our hydrogens and we have our ethane dioic acid like this and we're going to join our ester here and we're also going to imagine that we have additional alcohols and carboxylic acids at either side so we would have this hydrogen being removed and that OH being removed as well and then we just draw what's left over so I keep my bond because remember all polymers must have an extension bond and then I have my oxygen my CH2 group, another CH2 group, and then my oxygen. That's then going to bond into my carbon, which is bond double bonded to the oxygen. Then I have that same section there, and again, my extension bond on the other end. And this is now a repeat unit of a condensation polymer. So I've underwent condensation reactions and here I'm losing H2O 
I'd lose H2O on this side and I'd lose H2O on that side and I would make a polymer that has this particular repeating unit. So this puts it in a slightly better way for us to see it so because it's colour coded. So we have our carboxylic acids in blue and our alcohols in red. So you can see that we've got our functional groups at both sides and one thing to note is the boxes is just any group. It can be any number of carbons or hydrogens in the centre. It does not matter what is in the space of those boxes. It can be anything that has no effect on the actual reaction. The only thing that would affect would be what the actual polymer is that you're making. So to make it nice and simple, we just simply draw a box and we put all of our focus just on the functional groups. So our blue and our red are our monomers. Each time you can see that we've got these dotted lines here where we're removing a water and we have this alternating pattern of diacid, diol, diacid, diol and so on and so on. And we're forming our three ester groups here that are shown and yellow and this has all been formed every time we've lost one of these waters and you can see the waters underneath here and we know that we can continue the chain here and here and that would give us our extension bonds to show that the polymer is continuing to get larger because polymers tend to have hundreds or thousands of units and we're just looking at one small section here. So now I've got part of my polyester repeating over and over, and this is a small section of it that we've drawn here. So each time the diols and the dicarboxylic acids combine, we're getting a loss of water. And you can see that we've drawn it out again, tried to make it a little bit clearer this time. So this is our ethane dioic acid. and our ethane one two diol and these are joining together to form this polymer here and we've color coded again to make it nice and simple so the blue is our ester section come that has been coming from our ethane dioic acid and then the black part is the middle section from our alcohol and you can see that we've got our extension bonds here now, in an exam, you would never write the etc. That's just simply there to make the diagram understandable. You would just simply draw the extension bonds as we've shown there. So we can actually draw a chemical equation for this. And we do it very similar to the way that we did for addition polymers, where we use our N term. And what this is actually saying is N number of ethane dioic acids plus N number of ethane one through diol is going to give us this polymer here. And we're showing our repeat unit with our brackets and our N outside to tell us that I'm making this condensation polymer. And then I also make water and for and when I make this repeat unit, I'm losing two molecules of water because I'm forming two ester bonds, one at each end. And this is then going to give me two N waters. And we can draw out the repeat unit just by taking that polymer, removing the brackets and the N. And that is the section that is going to repeat over and over in our condensation polymer. So again, we can do the same thing, looking at a different polyester now, and you can see that the parts that was just a box has now got something inside it. So we have hexane 1,6 dioic acid and ethane 1,2 diol, but notice that nothing has actually changed in terms of what I make. So I've removed my three sections of water and I have formed my three ester groups. And all I've done in between those ester groups is drawn my part that's in the box alternating. So I have my red box for my alcohol and my blue box for my acid. And you can see I've got blue, red, blue, red, and the chain would continue on blue, red, blue, red. 
that's how we form our polyester. So it's a little bit different to an addition reaction. This time we're not breaking double bonds, we're actually forming new bonds with our ester group and losing that water. Um, instead of one monomer, we're going to have two monomers that are just alternating in their pattern. So I would strongly suggest that you maybe try to draw out a couple of different monomers and show how they form as a polymer. There are some questions in the textbook or you can certainly ask your teacher for some questions and just practice being able to draw out the polymer and also the repeat unit. Now, similar to addition polymers, condensation polymers are typically not biodegradable and this isn't a good thing. It, means that it's going to take hundreds of years for these polymers to break down and we don't want that. So typically we would recycle them but scientists now have been able to make some biodegradable polyesters and we can shorten this to just simply biopolyesters. And this was actually quite a large breakthrough in terms of the scientific community because it was a, a way for us to yes be able to use these polymers because they are very useful in our everyday life but still be able to have them break down without us having to potentially recycle or use a landfill or incinerate them. So an example of a biopolyester is one that can be made from lactic acid. Now lactic acid is very special. You'll probably have met this in biology when you've been looking at anaerobic respiration where you get this build up of lactic acid. We're not looking at it in terms of the biology. We want to look at how it can polymerize. And it's special in the fact that within the molecule itself, it actually contains an alcohol group and a carboxylic acid. This means that we only need one monomer here. This can polymerize with another copy of itself. So rather than having diacid, diol, diacid, diol, I can simply line up a number of lactic acid molecules and they can undergo condensation polymerization. And this makes this um, polymer, which is a biodegradable, and it's actually used for biodegradable plastic bags, or it can be used for internal stitches and surgery. Of course, if you have surgery and they give you stitches inside your body, you don't want them to be there for all time. They don't need to be because once the incision is healed, then there's no requirement for the stitches. But you don't want to have to go back into surgery to have them removed. So what actually happens is they use this biopolyester and the bacteria and microorganisms within your body just simply degrade them and then they are removed. So it's actually a very useful way of using polymers and we can still make use of the polyesters in all of these applications, but taking advantage of the fact that we can um, biodegrade them. Now, similar to our alcohols and carboxylic acids, there is not a lot about condensation polymers in the old specification because you didn't cover esters. There's a slight bit about nylon that you would find and a couple of questions on that, but you would have to look at potentially old A-level papers or another exam board to get some practice questions for these. You can ask your teacher and they'll be able to help you out. But we've got two marks of questions here, just looking at nylon. So nylon is formed by a different polymerization process to polyethene. So this is the second part of a question. The first part referred to polyethene. So we want to give the name. Well, it's what we've been talking about this whole time. This is condensation polymerization. And now we want to state one difference between the two polymerization processes. Now, there are a lot of different things that you could say here. There's actually six marks worth. I'm just going to pull out one of them and then I'll show you the rest on the mark scheme. So the one that I would normally go with is that in condensation polymerization, a small molecule of water is also formed. 
because that is quite a large difference compared to addition polymerization. Addition polymerization, you get one product, whereas with condensation, you make a small molecule of water, and this is going to get you that mark. So just to see what else you could say, you could also say that addition polymerization involves identical monomers. Condensation polymerization has two different monomers. Addition produces one product. Addition requires the breaking of carbon-carbon double bonds or condensation forms ester links. Any one of these would be a suitable answer because it's just looking for one thing that is slightly different between the two processes. Now that's everything for the triple content of the synthetic polymers topic. Make sure to check out the double content on addition polymers and so that you are confident on both sections. If you do have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below and we hope to see you back on the channel soon.